So the bow and bird for the Necromancer is one of the most popular there is. But when you are watching them, you may notice they are all more or less the same. The same builds you are always seeing. Maybe with a few different things within the Paragon boards, but mostly they all use the same aspects and fixes. Today guys, I bring you my not so normal bow and build guide. How's it going guys? My name is DPG and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out. And if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Before we go any further guys, this video is sponsored by MitchCactus.com. If you guys are looking to get ahead in Diablo 4, Mitch Cactus is a great, legit online service that can assist you in many, many different ways. Whether you need all your Lilith statues collected, a full campaign completion, how to get into a certain power level or quick access to world tier 4, Mitch Cactus has you covered with over 7,000 trust pilot reviews back in this service. This website is linked down below. Use code DPJ for 5% off. So this video isn't going to be 20 minutes long of me talking waffle about numbers. I'll just show you guys what I use, the different uniques I use, as well as those aspects and hearts. If you like the look of this, try it out. If you don't, move along. It's as simple as that. Now what I will say is, this build was meant for more survivability. Every right set up bone build I've seen do crazy amounts of damage. Nothing changes with this one. But most of the time, there are other builds I am seeing, they're getting one slapped by most enemies and those higher difficulties. I've tried to counter this with a few changes, which you will see. Now my level when recording this is under 90, the gear I've been using to do Nightmare Dungeons sometimes 30 levels above me, I've had from like a level 70. Yes this gear can be much much better, but as long as you know what to look for, you are good to go here. So first guys we have the skill tree. I won't bore you with this, I'll just try and cut to the chase. One point into reap and another point into, well we just want to get to the acolyte reap, just to create those corpses in times of need. This once you are on a roll though is much less needed so you do sometimes find yourself not using this at all. Now you want to max out that bone spear and then onto that paranormal bone spear which improves critical strike chance. Free into both unliving energy and imperfectly balanced. And then you want to put three into that huge flesh. These work like a charm and are, well, they seriously drive this build. Now one into Blood Mist, this is just our get out of jail free card. We use this on most of our builds. Use only when things get a little too hectic. Uh, we then put one into Corpse Explosion and that's about it. That is all that's needed here and I'll explain later. And then we put three into Grim Harvest and Fueled by Death. Now you want to put three into Death's Embrace and Death's Reach. We then use one in Corpse Tendrils, going across to Plagued Corpse Tendrils, where enemies hit by uh, this become vulnerable. We then put three into that Necrotic Carapace. Then we put three into Serration, three into Compound Fracture, and three into Evulsion. Moving down guys, three into Standalone, and three into Momentum Mori. We then use that Bone Storm as our ultimate going into Supreme Bone Storm and then we use Ossified Essence. Okay so on to the armors and weapons. Let's start with the obvious and the one I don't see anyone else using, especially with this build and that is the Temerity. This by the way is the older version, I'm yet to get the new one drop. So what's uh, great about this is the aspect. Effects that heal you beyond 100% life grant you a barrier. The newer version is even better in how it works, but this is still great. This means guys, from any form of health regen, no matter the source, grants you a barrier which allows us to tank more than usual. Great for survivability. Now the way in which I have this build set up is that so we more or less constantly have this barrier active. And I'll explain more as we go through the items that I use. Okay, so looking at my jewelry here with the hearts I have applied, firstly my amulet. We have a shitty roll here, but added ranks into revulsion is great. Plus damage uh, is okay, I guess. Plus bone skill damage as well, and the essence cost reduction. 
all pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I've tried, I've had, I've had decent ones, but this I just keep coming back to. Now the damage I do have here can be swapped out for something more beneficial. But this is the only, like I said, decent roll I had drop. Now Aspect is the Ossified Essence key passive, which also increases critical strike of your bone skills. The higher the roll, the better, obviously. This I insist on having on your amulet too. The heart we use here is a Wrathful variant where critical strikes and all subsequent damage within 4 seconds is absorbed by your target. Then all that damage erupts and causes even more damage. This is a must and works like a charm with that damage out well for that damage output. Okay, so ring one we have plus critical strike damage with bone skills, plus maximum essence. This could be swapped out for resource gen, I guess. We have plus critical strike chance. Uh, this is decent and plus that vulnerable damage too, which is incredible. Aspects you want deal extra damage while you have a barrier active. Because of their temerity, uh, you always have that barrier, so you always get that extra damage here. No, you obviously won't deal as much damage as what other aspects could offer you here, but because of that barrier and survivability, it's probably more important within the end game. This just makes sense to use this, and it pairs beautifully in giving you extra damage with that temerity. Like I said, great. Now the heart we use here is a uh, vicious variant where you gain critical strike damage uh, but your non-critical strike damage is weaker. With this build you more or less always see that critical strike damage so it makes sense to use this and it works wonders for that damage output for sure. Okay so ring 2 my roll is pretty bad. Damage to close enemies should be changed. Uh, it's just I'm at a point now where it costs so much to re-roll it. We have critical strike damage with bone skills, great. Critical strike chance as well as resource generation. Aspect we have a bad version but it still works well. Up to a 10% chance to generate 30 essence upon hitting a vulnerable enemy. Uh, this basically all our enemies will be vulnerable because of that corpse tendrils and away this will pop. Uh, thanks to this heart. So the heart we're using here is another vicious heart. And this is absolutely key for this build with a shadow of a doubt. So walking near a corpse automatically activates those corpse skills and it activates them free of charge from left to right on your skill bar. Definitely have corpse tendrils first and then corpse explosions second. This more or less means you rarely have to press any of these triggers. You don't have to wait for no cooldowns or anything. And the benefits are absolutely massive here. And this alone pops every corpse around you within quick succession. Enemies are constantly pulled in by your tendrils and everyone that's hit becomes a vulnerable. This means a loads of extra damage with what we have going on here with this build. Now every corpse that explodes also gives you essence back, increased damage and a chance to create a blood orb thanks to another aspect we use on this build. Now these blood orbs will trigger that barrier too so keep that in mind. Also trigger fortify via that uh, catapace too, which is another bonus. So yes, this one heart alone guys gives massive benefits to this build. I'm truly going to miss these hearts when season 1 ends. Okay, so on to my helm. Here we use the unique of deathless visage. For that basic aspect really, uh, plus the affixes which are great with that bone setup. There's no two which ways about it. You get essence here, you get damage and you get survivability too. So why not? On the chest piece, I'd recommend as much damage reduction as possible, even over the damage affixes I have here. But I like the roll I have and at the moment I can survive with it, so I ain't looking to change it. Aspect here, you want consuming a corpse as a chance to create a blood orb. Again, blood orbs will not only trigger your health regen, this means that barrier for that survivability and extra damage, but we also get but every other time we do pick up a blood orb when you'll see them a lot on the battlefield because like I said there's a chance here for them to come with every use of a corpse. So every single corpse explosion, every single corpse tendrils is a chance to trigger a blood orb which again gives you so many benefits. And obviously I'm only like a level 80 odd now. Eventually my next board is going to be the blood orb board, meaning I get way more benefits, which we'll talk about in a second when we get to the Paragon board. But yes guys, it's absolutely amazing for what we have going on here. 
Okay, so on your gloves, I have, well, I have a few pairs. These at the moment are the best for me. I have a chance to heal for life. We have a plus percentage into that lucky hit. We have four ranked into bone spear, which I'd say is a must. And we also have critical strike damage with bone skill. So actually not a bad roll whatsoever. Aspect you want, bone spear's primary attack makes enemies hit beyond the first vulnerable for a few seconds. Bone shards from bone spear deal extra damage to vulnerable enemies. Enemies are most of the time guys vulnerable thanks to those tendrils anyway. So this is always active, you're basically always getting that damage. Now my boots ain't the best, uh, but that damage reduction while injured helps an absolute ton. And also with that essence cost reduction. I would really look for movement speed on boots if you can. Uh, but aspects you want here, critical strikes grant movement speed too. This helps a lot. So our 200 weapon is a scythe purely because kills grant life. Which means you can kill, it grants you life, this can activate your barrier again. We know all the bonuses to the barrier within this build. Affixes, you want core damage, you want critical strike damage with bone skills, uh, vulnerable damage, and if possible, you can try and land yourself critical strike damage, uh, just an overall affix. I have intelligence on mine, which is far from the worst, so I'm happy for the time being. Aspects we're using here definitely isn't the best reel you can get, but it's still great for what we have going on here. Gain 44% or 34%, sorry, increased critical strike chance for 6 seconds when you cast Corpse Tendrils. You deal 68% bonus critical strike damage to enemies damaged by those Corpse Tendrils. This just packs a punch and we do so much damage because of this aspect alone. Okay, so moving on to the Book of the Dead, and everything, as you'd expect, is sacrificed. Skeletal Warriors, we sacrifice the Skirmishers for that Critical Strike chance. Skeletal Mages, we sacrifice those Cold Mages for that increased damage to vulnerable enemies. And our Golem is gone for that Iron Increased Critical Strike damage. Okay, so now on to the Paragon Board, which I, I will link down below within the video description if you want to go through step by step of exactly how mine is set up and eventually will be set up when I reach a level 100 by a quick summary here so from the start we work our way up to the right and within the first glyph slot we have sacrificial okay so moving up to the first board and the first board we use is that bone graph board making our way straight to that legendary node also using the uh, reinvigorate rare node and the calcified rare nodes with supporting magic nodes around them too we then go up to that glyph socket here where we use amplify now making our way left to the flesh eater board going straight to that legendary node. Then down to that glyph socket where we apply that territorial into that glyph socket. We then go down onto another board where we use the center of death board here. Working our way straight to this legendary node. And then left to the socket where we use that grave keeper. From here guys I'm working my way left and I'm going to use the blood bigots blood board here making your way straight to that legendary node then to the glyph socket where here guys you want to use that exploit glyph and that's basically it people I've used this with the purpose of it being different and I'm enjoying it for sure yes it could be better in regards to damage output but if I have the time before Starfield arrives I may just farm for the certain items I need to make it that perfect setup and that perfect build but with max roll gear here I feel this would be definitely one of the better bomb builds out there but there we have it guys guys if you enjoyed the video and enjoyed the build let me know do drop a like as well, it really helps out. And well, hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.